Hi, it's is Keeper, and welcome back to On Air. Glad you could join me. Let me ask you a question. Are you a direct seller who has a large downline? Great. You've done really, really well. Here's another question. Are they getting older? Ah, yeah. You know, last week I had a number of people in their 50s, 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 60s, and 70s call me who have large organizations say, Keeper, I've got to figure out how to get younger. If anyone knows where I need to go, it will be you. And I've told them, you know, there are a few companies that really have it right. And there's one company that does it really, really well. And this one woman says to me, you're talking about Zango, aren't you? I said, yeah. She says, you talk about them a lot. And I said, well, I like them. Uh, I like them as well. I like Avon. I like Mary Kay. I like Herbalife. I like Tupperware. I, I like a lot of different companies. But if there's one company that really has their finger on the pulse of how to communicate and how to get engaged with the 20 to 30 year market, it is Zango. Today we have a special guest, one of the people spearheading the entire move at 200K for Zango and part of their multi million dollar club, Tommy Johnson, an 11 year veteran of direct selling. But he's spearheading the 20 to 30 movement with MB30, Millionaire Before 30. It's Zango's movement to attract the younger market. Here you've got someone who's 11 years in, teaching and learning, more importantly, from the 20 to 30 year old market and utilizing Skype, utilizing Facebook properly, utilizing home meetings. He does many home meetings and a number of them are Skyped across the country and he has a number of people who are under 30, in their mid-20s, doing the exact same thing. So you sit back and relax and learn today as we have our special guest, Tommy Johnson, here to talk to you about how to attract the 20 to 30 year old market here on On Air. My mother used to sell princess house. Join them way that night. Norma siempre vendía cosas de Avon. Oh, it must have been around 1935. But those knives were amazing. The one lady's name was Mary Kay. And I said, oh, cosmetics will never sell on party plan. Uh, was a single mom and created these hair care products for black women and became the first self-made millionaire in the United States. I just think that's extraordinary. Welcome back to On Air. Glad you could join us. We have a special guest, as I talked about in, in the opening. Are you a direct seller, a direct selling company, a veteran looking to somehow get a handle on what is an absolutely dynamic market, the 30 and under market? We all know the average age of a distributor right now, somewhere between 45 to 48 years old. If you are looking to really build some serious residual income, you must get a handle on that market. And of course, as I mentioned, the person who we have today, Tommy Johnson, 200K with Zango, also multi-million dollar club uh, earner with Zango, has been able to put together something extraordinary as it relates to being able to attract the younger market. And because of it, Zango is just sweeping across the globe. Tommy, how are you? I'm great, Keeper. Good morning. You know... I first met you last month in Arizona at the Women Building Bridges uh, uh, Conference, which was absolutely a great event. Uh, you had a platform where you were talking about the MB30, which MB30, if I'm correct, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, stands for million, uh, 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 Millionaire Before 30? Yeah, Millionaire by 30. M millionaire by 30. And as I watched you talk about it, you also brought on one of your protégés, uh, to also talk about it, and I'll, I'll let, let you talk about him if you want. Uh, but one of the things that struck me was the strategies that you all are using to attract this younger market. So let's just kind of go through it. You're an 11-year veteran in direct selling. Am I correct? That's correct, yep. 
what company or companies have you been with during that time? I've been blessed. I've only been with one company. I've been with Zango the entire time. Okay. Tell us about your experience with, with Zango going through your 11-year uh, history, and then what happened as you decided to go for this 30 and under market? Well, my experience has been great. It's been exceptional. I, it's really been a dream for us, and not only with the company, but the team, the upline team that we really just dumb lucked our way into. Back then, I didn't know how to ask the hard questions. I didn't know how to analyze the situations, the timing, or anything. Uh, but, you know, to hit this, this line of sponsorship was really a blessing to, to condense my learning curve and my wife's learning curve and help us to build, you know, a multi million dollar business in a relatively short period of time. So it's, it's been great. So once you started doing that, and I imagine the company that you're talking about, and I'll go ahead and throw it out there, was no doubt Zango. Everyone knows uh, that I think very highly of Zango, along with a number of other companies. Uh, but when it comes to cutting-edge technology and blending that with old-school way of doing things, I don't think there's a company in direct selling that does it better. And I don't think there are very many people in direct selling that understand the importance of blending, converging the two strategies uh, better than you. So please share with us because a lot of people want to know how do we attract this younger market? Well, you know, this, young, it's this younger, and you can never get away from the high touch. You nailed it, Keeper. You know, you need to be high tech and high touch. And and I've always kind of been excited about the, the, the fact that Zango's kind of, uh, we refer to them kind of as the apple of network marketing. They're very cool. Mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. You know, there's been over 120 millionaires created, and, and most of them aren't under the age 30. And so, you know, I, this is a market that's been untouched, and, and it's a market that's hungry. It's hungry for this because of what's happened over the last six years. But how, how we've managed to, how we're managing at a very rapid rate to attract you know, a, a, a population of people that need this more than ever, that, that are uh, the most uh, socially connected group of people in the world, and they move very, very fast. And that was something that I had to get used to, and that's something that's kept young people from accelerating the network marketing at, at, at an accelerated rate for a long time, is the disciplines to deal with the delayed gratification. Right. The, the things we're doing is we're adjusting the business model to fit into their lifestyle, and that that that's a, that's Aaron Garrity, you know. That's Zango. That's that's their their willingness to kind of have an alliance with us, a partnership with the field to help make changes from their perspective as well. It's it's uh it's amazing. It's you just said two things, in fact three, and I'll hopefully remember all of them. You mentioned that of the hundred twenty something million. 120-something uh, people that are millionaires with Zango, a number of them are under 30. In your estimation, what would you say the, the percentage is? What, 10%, 20%? Okay. No, 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 I, I don't want you to misunderstand. How many of the 120 do you think are under 30 that are millionaires with Zango? Uh, very few. I okay. Say. So, you know, less than single-digit percentage would be my guess. Okay. Uh, I would imagine for most companies that would still be a, a high percentage. You also mentioned the, the, the socially connected uh, uh, way of which the, the under 30 actually communicates. I imagine you're speaking more to, to the fact of the, socially, the social media connected way in which they do business. Um, am I correct? Certainly Facebook, Twitter, all the different things like this. You know, there's a billion users of, fa of Facebook. You can't ignore that out of seven to eight billion people worldwide. And they built it, not us. You know, it's interesting, Tommy, as you and I talk, I uh, have been in direct selling for going on 18 years. The first five or six years, I was a distributor, and I started getting into the media side of things, which I absolutely love. But one of the things that I noticed right away, and in speaking to you last week, you, know, you pretty much echoed the same sentiment. As technology began to blossom around the globe, the veteran or the mature direct seller tended to try to use that to make their business for them individually be better instead of using it to connect and just use it as a communications tool. What I have seen you all do as the other people move to technology to do the business for them, you stayed with the high touch, the person to person, belly to belly. You're still doing home meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you can't get away from that. I, I, I've never seen you know, I've been blessed to be around some great mentorship, and I've met a lot of people over the 11 years that have been top money earners of many different companies, and yet have I had sh one person show me a uh, business that they built very, very big and sustained 
with hiding behind a computer it, it, and, and behind a phone. It just doesn't work that way. Why do you think many m mature direct sellers continue to hang on to, I'm only going to build my business uh, through technology, phone, even just trying to build it through Facebook? I tend to think you use that as a tool to communicate, but I love the fact, how many home meetings on average do you do a week? I did, I did 18 last week. Shh. Yeah. Eight. Uh, yeah, and several of them, you know, we, well, several of those 18 I was Skyped into. Mm -hmm. I was live at six home meetings, um, six or seven. You know, you just said something that is absolutely key. You said you were Skyped in, which allowed you to be at all of these meetings without always having to have them in your place or to physically be in a location. You Skyped in. I imagine as Google Hangout becomes even more popular and better understood, you're really going to start to use that as well. Yeah, you know, I'm embarrassed by how really how my generation and up has used uh, social media and so and technology. Uh, Skype, by the way, is a, I've been saying for years is a very underutilized technology for our business. It's almost as powerful as being there in the living room. In many cases, it can be more powerful because you show, you know, your family. My, my daughter might come up and sing a song or you know introduce my dog to everybody. It really humanizes the business. Right. Or I, I am embarrassed by how we've used technology, um, social media to try to build our businesses when um, I've had more people just in the last four months join my organization th uh, since MB30 started through social media than I have since its inception. And I have, you know, over, I have the maximum amount of followers on Facebook and I have a huge downline of people that have been trying to utilize it to grow their business. Again, more have joined our group through social media in the last 12 months. 12, 12 to uh, 16 weeks than have in the previous nine years. And that's because wow. they, they know how to use it. We don't. You know, it is amazing. I know you use Skype a lot. And you're absolutely uh, correct. It's like being there because you're actually live. You can actually see what's going on. People can actually see, uh, 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 can see your face, can hear you. And so the transfer of emotion is still very, very real. It's still very, very relevant. I was on a Google Hangout uh, session yesterday, and they talked about there are new apps that are, are that will be uh, uh, introduced or have, may have already been introduced that allow you to do a live Google Hangout and broadcast it live on your Facebook page. Now, you using the combination of Facebook, Twitter, and then now the possibility of broadcasting live on your Facebook page it's just only going to cause things to explode. From your standpoint, why is the MB30, the you know, creating millionaires under 30, before 30, why is that so important to a company? Well, well, real quick, let me just back up. And if you want to learn how to use social media correctly to grow your business, um, as you start to work with the under 30 age group, open your office up. Sit there and let them work in your office and listen to them. They'll teach you how to use it. And that's what we're doing. We're letting them help teach us how to make the business model fit more into their more and more into their lifestyle. They, they'll teach us real quickly what social media. They'll make comments like, "Yeah, I've been trying to figure out how I could get things in more information to people quicker than text messaging." Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just listening to what, the way they communicate and the way they think. I used to make the joke that social media makes you less social, but the reality is I was tremendously wrong. And 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 by and keeper, I don't believe that there's people out there that are sitting there hiding behind Facebook and so forth, big networkers and building big businesses. They might have hired a big business before, and now they're trying to make money off something they're selling off social media. I don't buy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but it's why is it so important to make, uh, to make a long story short? Um, the, the main reason it's important is who's going to be telling the story in your downline in 10 years, in your downline in 10, 20 years. Who's going to be telling your corporation's story? You know, who's going to be sharing these products on a massive scale? One. Two, they're hard workers. I use, I, I took, I'm taking full responsibility, but I used to put it off on them and say, hey, the reason young people aren't so great at this oftentimes is because you, you know, they wanted instant gratification and, and uh, had an entitlement mentality. I was, I was wrong. Okay? They figured out on their own that this isn't their parents' generation. They don't want to go to work for somebody for 40 or 50 years for 50000 and try to retire on half that. You know, after giving their life to somebody, they figured out on their own that that doesn't work because of the last six years in this economy. And and the big reason that it's the most important to me, Keeper, is because this is an opportunity to give back. I take full responsibility for my children's financial education in the future. I know, unfortunately, that you know, I must have missed the class in high school and in the college that I went to on wealth building. They don't teach us about money. 
They don't teach us about leadership skills. They don't teach us, you know, about wealth and about leverage and residual um, income. So you know, the curriculum is 50 years behind, and many ch young young adults get funneled down to a career that they have no passion on, that they can only make a living. So I, 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 with this MB30 thing, it's an opportunity to give back in a time not only in the country but in the world that where what's the what's the pro, what's going on right now? It's a financial crisis. And so they need something like this. They're dying of thirst, and we're giving away free water. So it's an opportunity to do our part to really change the world. You know, you said something about you must have missed the wealth building class when you were in school. I missed the wealth building class, apparently, too. I didn't know they even had one. Before we go to break here, uh, you had mentioned Aaron Garrity, uh, one of the co-founders, CEO over at Zango, a very dear friend of mine. Uh, he's made our power 50 a number of times. In fact, a number of people from Zango have made our power list. One of the things that I find most interesting that you mentioned to me last week when you and I were uh, talking about this is that he has been to your house a number of times during these MB30 uh, uh, um, uh, presentations. 2020 parties, we call them. Oh, so uh, um, just, just so I'm clear, 2020 stands for what? Well, the objective is it's, it's a game plan. Once you sign up, you want to have a home type party, but we call them 2020s. It's high energy. That pick, okay. It's fun. The 20, 20, 20 some year olds, a box of Limitless. It has about 20 in it and 20 water bottles on ice. So that's, that's where the name came from. Okay, we're going to get into the strategies that you actually use with the 2020 in the next segment. But before I close, you had mentioned Aaron has been to a number of these 2020 meetings. What I find interesting is here you have one of the most dynamic individuals, one of the most dynamic corporate CEOs in all of direct selling at a 2020 meeting to learn, to understand what it's going to take to help not only your group, the MB30 movement, but so that Zango can be better positioned to support these young people as they go through their lives. They get it, which is one of the most brilliant things about the Zango uh, company that I happen to like. How many times has he been there? I think four already. Joe Morton's coming on Monday and Tuesday for 2020s here at my house. I've never seen anything like it. And that, that's why, you know, Zango will be as big as they're going to be. And it's because there is a true relationship. And, they, and Aaron's sitting in my living room at t 1 in the morning with these young folks because that's late afternoon for the late evening for them. And, and just listening and learning, you know, and learning from them. And that's all they know is they have this relationship, you know, with the founders and CEO. It's, it's so powerful. I, I don't really know how to do it any justice verbally. I'm just really excited about the future and the people who stick around. Well, you should be. When we come back, we're going to get into more of the strategies that you can share. You know, some of them are probably really uh, close to the vest for you. But I'm going to try to dig some of those out because I have some people who've been asking me, can you find out what it is that these people at Zango and the NB30 group are doing? Because our company needs to understand when we come back. Okay, Keeper. Thank you. Cash Flow Show, Direct Sales Radio. Host Deb Bixler brings you sales tips, lead generation systems, and best business practices that guarantee direct sales success. Whether you're looking for a little extra cash or a career change, the Cash Flow Show, Direct Sales Radio will give you proven systems that will work in your home business. The Cash Flow Show, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time on World Talk Radio Variety. When my mother used to sell princesses, house. Join them way that night. Norma siempre vendía cosas de Avon. Oh, it must have been around 1935. But those knives were amazing. The one lady's name was Mary Kay, and I said, oh, cosmetics will never sell on party plan. Uh, was a single mom and created these hair care products for black women and became the first self-made millionaire in the United States. I just think that's extraordinary. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, what's up? My name is Kamuel Kirk, and your friends sent you this video because they're just as excited as I am about a new movement we call MB30. Now, MB30 stands for Millionaire by 30, and it's already changing the lives of thousands of young adults everywhere by allowing our generation to take control of our lives and our financial future. Look, guys, the thing is, high school and college only teach you how to get a job working for somebody else, but they do not teach you how to be your own boss and get rich. And even the best college degree nowadays doesn't guarantee you anything and usually leaves you buried in debt. But even if you did get a job, do you really want to work a 9 to 5 for the next 30 or 40 years of your life working for somebody else so that they can go out and have fun while you're making them money? Think about it, guys. It's time we work for ourselves and make our own money. Look, I don't want to be the typical 18, 19, or 20-year-old kid who's broke, and I hope you don't either, and that's exactly why I started this movement. And the heart of this movement is a healthy, safe, and extremely effective energy supplement called Limitless. Guys, chances are you and your friends are already drinking energy drinks, sports drinks, soda, coffee, or whatever, but the thing is, these companies will never pay you to drink and share their products. So, why are you spending money when you could be making money by referring your friends to Limitless and getting paid for their purchases? Think about it, guys. You get to be your own boss, set your own hours, literally work with who you want to work with, and you can make as much money as you want. You will never find that freedom working a job for somebody else. Now, we're partnering with a company that reached a billion dollars in sales faster than Apple and faster than Microsoft, and they're called Zango. And as great as they are, they've never focused on building with our generation before, but now we have their attention because this movement is catching on all around the world. And we literally have a team of millionaires and multimillionaires behind us who want to work with us and teach us everything that we need to succeed. And our goal is to make more millionaires under 30 years old than any other company in history ever. And guys, if you want to work with us, you can be one of those millionaires. The truth is, our generation is looking for a better option, and this is it. And honestly, guys, this thing's going where it's going, with or without you. And you don't want to look back a year from now and wish that you would have gotten involved today because this thing is going to be huge. Guys, you know this makes sense, so do yourselves a favor and contact the person that thought enough about you to send you this video and join the MB30 today. Welcome back to On Air with our special guest, Zango 200K and multi-million dollar club earner, Tommy Johnson. Uh, Tommy, if I'm correct, you are the son of one of the more powerful Zango distributors, and who would that be? Carolyn Johnson, 200K multi-million dollar club member. My mom, I'm proud of her. Uh, yes, and also one of the co-founders of Women Building Bridges. Uh, we're going to be doing an entire story on Women Building Bridges in our first edition of Distributor Magazine at the end of next month. So, uh, uh, you know, it, it's going to be funny because as people look at uh, our first edition of this magazine, they're going to say there's stories about Zango all over the place. So it just happened to work out that way. How's your wife, Lindsay, doing? Uh, she's doing an excellent things. She's real well, real well. Everybody's great. You know, you had mentioned in the first segment that having these meetings at your home, your your wife is involved with the business, obviously. Uh, but your daughter, Sierra, who I actually met last week, and uh, uh, you also have a son named Jerry. Uh, what's it like for the family, for your kids to watch you do this with these young people? Yeah, you know, it's more, it's definitely more fun for them. Um, with the young people because we have a basketball court in the backyard our son plays basketball we have a guy who joined our group who's NCAA player and they become really friends really good friends Jerome Garrison and my son so it, it, they, they're having a blast and I, I, I love it when I look up during a meeting in at the couch and there's my little my little girl Sierra just staring and listening in and or my son sitting down on the ground listening into one of the MB30 dream sessions where we do where everybody shares their dreams uh, and then then we talk about it afterwards it's it's a blessing I'm, I'm having the time of my life you know, it must be really, really di uh, dramatic for your son, who I believe you said he's 12 years old, to see someone six, seven, eight years older than him gravitate to this business. It must have such an impression on him. And you mentioned Jerome Garrison. Uh, on July 5th, I'll be interviewing the entire Garrison family or, um, you know, J Jerome Sr., uh, Cheryl Garrison, and Jerome Garrison Jr. for a segment on On Air as we look to... Uh, build out our uh, 30 under 30 power list. Let's go over, if you don't mind sharing, some of the strategies that you all have found at work. Last week, I got a couple of calls from people from other companies who were asking me, Keeper, look, my company is getting to be so old. The downline is just not moving. What do I need to do to attract someone younger? Now, understand, I'm talking about someone who's 70 asking me this question. Because this individual knows that their residual income is going to be drying up if it hasn't for the most part already. 
what is it? How, how, how do you guys go about it? Because Zango has an entire suite of products. They have supplements. They have skin care. Uh, uh, they have all sorts of stuff. Do you focus on one product for the under 30? What do you do? Yeah, no, that, that's a key part of it, Keeper. It really is. There, there needs to be single product focus. You know, I, I considered it that when, when kind of kicked off this MB30 thing, I considered a product that, that uh, or a couple of products, a line of products. And I'm really glad that we chose a single product, but also a product that has significant economic potential, a product that is ahead of a market trend, makes the world a better place, and, you know, a better solution to a market trend, and, and gives instant gratification. That certainly helps. <laughs> So the first thing you did was single out one product for the under 30. Why one product? Is it your thought that too many products might overwhelm, which it typically does for anyone? Let's, let's be you know, quite candid here. It doesn't make any difference if you're 20, 30, 40, or 50. If someone threw a whole basket of products to you and said, go market those, it'd be overwhelming. But why would you single out one product only? Well, there, there's, there's several reasons, but to, to make it quick, um, it's because it, it's they're simple and it's, there's focus. And in business, you know, confusion doesn't give anybody any traction. In fact, Zengo has an amazing product line. They have over 50 products. And they, they built a beautiful catalog. And I had purchased 120 catalogs. And as I was going through them here in my office doing one-on-ones, uh, uh, and I'd point out the different products and go through the pages with the candidates that are there, I, I didn't have one person go, that's it. Tommy, that's the product right there. That's the one I need. That's the one I need for my Aunt Susie. And it made me really realize it more and more, the simple, if you think of Southwest Airlines, one size airplane, Starbucks started with you know five products and it's still basically one focus and that's on caffeine. If you think of um, Apple, they continue to recreate themselves. You know, um, billion dollar brands within billion dollar brands, iPod, iPad, iTouch, iPhone, and so forth. So. And, and you know, it's again, it's but it's, uh, the economic potential of a business is the economic potential of the product or service keeper. You can't just pick any product. I mean, there has to there, there's a, there's a rhyme and reason to why which one, but mainly simplicity and focus, and we can move quicker that way. So you picked one uh, product that uh, was in alignment with the 20 to 30 year old market. I imagine we're talking about the limitless because there's a lot of energy drinks, a lot of energy supplements. And you've picked out uh, a, a product, like I said, it's probably the limitless, that you know they will gravitate towards because they want the energy, they, they want to be able to be up all night and party and, and, and do all of that. Now that you've got them, the strategy for keeping them, as we talked about earlier, I know you do home meetings where most people have tried to move away from that because individually it makes their business simpler, but for the group it does not. You have been able to maintain the group dynamic, which is so fundamentally relevant to the growth of any direct selling company. Was, was, was this the strategy all along? Yeah, it was because everything has to be duplicatable and going and getting hotels and charging five or ten dollars to get in is not duplicatable in this age group. And and you know, having chairs for everybody is not duplicatable. Everything has to be duplicatable and, and it has to be fun and there needs to be motivation. And and that's one of the things that, that young people are lacking in their lives is optimism and, and you know it's and again it needs to be simple and fun all the time. But optimism, positivity <clears throat> and, and motivation, you know, a lot of us adults have let society that's all negative come in, not, that's not only coming in through the newspaper and the TV like it used to, it's coming in through our smartphones, it's coming in through the, you know, everywhere we're getting negativity and we let it program our brains and so that's what garbage in, garbage out and that's what they're hearing. So they come be around something fun, motivated, a bunch of people like-minded that are heading in the same direction. That, that's half of it right there, Keeper. They're having a blast and they're getting leadership development, something that they're not getting in school and many of them aren't getting at home because they've watched their parents lose their happiness, their homes, their cars. Well, if, 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 if I could just in, in, interrupt here, because I, I really just want to stay on the strategy part of this. One product that you focused on, you're consistently doing home meetings, you utilize Skype. When you do your home meetings, are they temp typically accompanied with a Skype uh, uh, broadcast? Uh, no, not I wouldn't say typically. You know, it's a big commitment to to, to launch a new market in, in your area and really get it rocking. You got to you got to start in your own home, you know. And then the the goal is to grow out of there. We we did three or and continue to three or four week in our own home, you know, with you know upwards of a hundred people 
young people under the age 30 packed in there. That's a big commitment. However, last night there was there was at least seven of them that I know of that were going on around the country in my group. Okay, at the, last night, and I was able to Skype into many of them. This, okay, hold on a second. There were at least seven 2020 meetings going on in other parts of the country that you were, and you were able to, to Skype into a few of those? Yeah, I Skyped into a few. You know, thank goodness for time changes, but, yeah. but I was able to Skype into to several of them. Aaron Garrity Skyped into some, you know, and um, I believe Joe Morton might have Skyped into one last night, and, and it's, it's leverage in its truest form. So you've got people under 20 doing their own 2020 meetings, having people show up. So what this tells me is like what you said earlier, they are motivated, they do want to learn, they do want to make their own money, they want to control their own destiny. If they have the proper training. Now, here we have you, and I'm just for the for a lack of a better word, call you a mature or experienced direct seller. And you are handing down years of knowledge in your traditional direct selling strategy to people who can then take that and put it into how they communicate right now through Skype and Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. That's essentially what's going on here. Yeah, yeah, that's that's largely part of exactly what's going on here, and we're at the very, very beginning of it. Wow. Uh, if there's, is there any one other element that is key to keeping them? Oh yeah, the industry. <laughs> you know, the industry is built on the concept of equity. You know, what is it? You know, relationships, real estate, everything's built on equity. So it's critical that you get points on the board with people. They like to move quickly. You know, you can't say, okay, today is uh, Thursday. We're going to do another party or 2020 on next Thursday. No, 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 no. Well, you start right now. They start inviting right then, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, midnight. They start inviting and start working their business the second they sign up. So you have to move very, very, very quickly, okay? So are, are you saying once they sign up, you want them to, to start attending and creating their own meetings immediately that week? Not necessarily. However, I do want them to host their first 2020 party within the first month or so. Also, it's great for volume consumption. So yes. and yeah. if they, they get the product, you don't want it building, stacking up. We want it out working for them. You know, I, I like what you just said. Uh, you want them to host at least their first 2020 party in the first month because anything more than that, you're just ramming them through the process and they're really not going to get an opportunity to learn. So 20s are open to everybody in a given area. And so we do three-way phone calls, Skypes, one-on-ones, and they plug into the other 2020s that are already going on. And it becomes a family. This MV30 started in Arizona and now it's spread all over the world in, in four months. But it, it's a family, literally, family. And they refer to themselves as that. So cross-line, up-line, down-line alike, they all become a family and they help one another. Their career have cross-line in their 20s doing 2020s for one another every single night. It's amazing. Wow. I've never seen anything like it. That would never happen. That would never happen five years ago, ten years ago with any company. Cross-line support because they're so afraid that they're going to be cross, there's going to be cross-line recruiting which is something I've never, ever believed in all that much. I think it happens anywhere in any business. But you're talking about the ultimate support system. As it relates to the ultimate support system, let's talk about how people contact you. Because I wish we had more time to talk to you. But uh, uh, we're, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have you back on very, very soon. How do people contact you to learn more? Uh, is, is there a website? Do you want them to go to the Zango site? Is there an MB30 site? What is it? There's a couple of different resources where you can reach me and also check out, you know, kind of the MB30 movement. And that's one thing we've done with Social Media Keeper is is this is this MB30 movement group page, not the not the fan page because we're not really updating it right now. It's a lot of work, but the group page, MB30 group. There's one in Russia and everywhere now, but the one that's in the U.S. It's it's become like this fan this association where there's recognition and help and and activity being shown regularly. Um, so that's one place. And you can find me from there, Tommy Johnson, but also... So you're talking about a group page on Facebook? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. You have to keep in mind, we've got some older people here who are going to say, group page? What's a group page? <laughs> better. You know, back in, a while back, it was, it was better to not um, 
you know, being older and, and wiser, there's a wisdom that comes with age, and there still is, but that was such an advantage. Nowadays, if you're, if you're growing older, it's becoming a disadvantage because you're becoming less and less connected with no. the fast pace that things are changing. So you better get used to learn what it is. <laughs> better learn what it is. And I'm not saying go build your business on Facebook. I'm not saying to learn how to use it. That's a key point. Now that you're older, it's a disadvantage. 20 years ago, it was the advantage, not anymore. This is the information age, not the industrial age. So, so yeah, and then there's also TommyJohnson.com, and that's currently being updated, but that's a good resource. And you can check out MB30.com, 30.com. So there's just some different places where you can check out what's going on here. And, and, and folks, we're at the very, very tip of the iceberg, what, what I firmly believe will be the biggest growth curve the industry has ever seen. I think the, not only uh, in your estimation it would be the biggest growth curve, it is the biggest growth curve that needs to happen if direct selling is to survive. Because we're seeing uh, a sales numbers go up from company to company, but a lot of that is due in part to people jumping from one company to the next. So it's just really inflated and it's really quite false. Uh, they're blaming it on the corporations when it's not them. It's that older people are holding on to their money because they're scared and they think that's the answer. These young folks. They're hungry. They're looking for opportunity. It's, it's, not, it's not if it will survive. Network marketing is going to thrive. We just have to figure it out that what, what, uh, you know, what's, what's feeding it, and it's this young generation. It's a blast. Tommy, it's been great having you on today. Uh, a lot of people have been wanting to know what it is that you and the MB30 movement along with Zango have been doing to cause so much excitement and so much energy. Thanks again for coming on. Yeah, it's a pleasure, Keeper. It always is. I really appreciate it. You take care now. Bye-bye. Right, Bye. -bye. Bye. Air. We want to thank Tommy Johnson for spending as much time as he did. He's a very busy man for talking about how direct selling companies need and can, if they want to, attract the under 30 market. With him and Zango, they have the MB30 movement, which stands for Millionaire by 30. Any company can do this. But one of the things that's absolutely critical, and that is the support, that is the commitment of the actual company, the parent company, the corporation, to get behind attracting people under 30. As I mentioned earlier, the average distributor age is about 45 to 47. I've had a couple of people in their late 50s and 60s, and even one last week in their 70s, call and ask me, how do we get a younger market? My downline is just, they, they, they've stopped working. They just don't have the energy or the passion which makes a lot of sense because if you haven't spent the time building your back end, which is what I think is the 20 to 30 year old market, the 30 to 40 year old market, the 40 to 50 year old market and so on and build those platforms where they can land successfully or matriculate successfully through if they started early, you're going to have a problem. One of the things that uh, uh, Aaron Garrity, CEO and co-founder of uh, uh, Zango has recognized, along with Joe Morton, Beverly Hollister, uh, uh, Kent Wood, all of them, Gordon Morton, one of the things that they have recognized is their need to be in the process. They're there to learn. They're just not staying back in their white ivory tower and saying, okay, Tommy, you guys go do your thing. No, they are actually going to these meetings, listening and learning from the people 20 to 25 years old, 20 to 30, and then going back to the IT department, going back to the marketing department, going back to the research and development part department and saying, look, our future is with this market. This is the market that will be with us if we bring them in early and treat them right and treat them fairly and teach them what they need to know. And then at the same time, we need to learn what we need to learn will be with us for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. That's how it works. Tommy also mentioned something that was absolutely critical, and that was having the home meetings, and then utilizing technology properly. There is no better time to utilize technology in direct selling. Ten years ago, it was all wrong because you couldn't build a business through email. You couldn't build a, a business just through sending friends to a, a website because you couldn't have the person-to-person -person exchange. Now with Skype and now with the advent of Google Hangout, where you can have up to ten people on a live broadcast and send it around the world there's nothing you can't do. Talk about building long distance. My goodness, it doesn't get any better than this. 
every tool that you could possibly need and other tools that are coming are even greater. Because I mentioned, with, for instance, even with Google Hangout, there's technology out there that will allow you to do a live broadcast if you have the app on your Facebook page. Imagine that, a live broadcast from your home. And you can have a panel of five, six, seven, eight, or nine people if you wanted to on the broadcast on your Facebook page. It's a, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And you can bet MB30, Zango, and Tommy Johnson are going to be all over it. If you don't do it, I'm going to tell you, you're going to, add, you're going to uh, uh, hand over all responsibility. You're going to hand over the reins to them. It was a great interview. We'll have Tommy Johnson back on really, really soon. Um, you all have a great day. This is pretty exciting.